As a wildlife photographer, I always want to get closer to the animals, but that's not always possible. So the second plan would be to get a big, huge, long lens, but they're heavy and expensive and just difficult to carry. So there's something kind of magical called a teleconverter. And a teleconverter can make your lens longer. This is a 1.4x teleconverter, so with this 400 millimeter f5.6 lens, it becomes basically a 560 millimeter f8 lens, approximately. And it fits right between the lens and the body. But using a teleconverter isn't as easy or as perfect as it might sound. So let's talk a little bit more about how a teleconverter actually works. Oh, my better lights blinking from the cold. That was awesome, right? <laughs> I can't believe it. He, how high do you think he was? Like 20 feet over our head? Let's back up so that we can see the entire image circle coming from the lens. The red box here represents the camera sensor. If we attach a 1.4x teleconverter to the lens, the entire image circle spreads out. Now the sensor stays the same size, but the image circle is bigger, so the sensor is seeing a smaller part of the image coming from the lens. If we put on a 2x teleconverter, it spreads out even further, pulling you closer, but gathering less of the total light. This puts a lot of emphasis on the lens's ability to capture detail, and because it's gathering a smaller portion of the overall light, it means you'll end up using higher ISOs if you use the same shutter speed. Using a teleconverter doesn't physically change your lens, but if you want to understand the images that you'll be getting, you'll need to multiply the factor for the teleconverter, like 1.4x or 2x, times both the focal length and the aperture. It's very much like using a crop factor body on a lens. In fact, in many cases, it's more effective to use an APS-C body like this Canon 7D Mark II than it is to use a full-frame body. You'll extract more detail out of the center of the lens. Because your sensor doesn't gather the total light from the lens, you'll have to use a higher ISO. With a 1.4x teleconverter, you gather one stop less light, so you'll be getting twice as much noise because you'll be using an ISO one stop higher. With a 2x teleconverter, you're gathering one quarter of the light and thus you'll have four times more noise because you have to multiply that aperture times two, which is actually two stops. Because you're increasing the effective aperture, you might lose autofocus with your camera. Most camera bodies will only autofocus with lenses that have a minimum f-stop number of f-stop 5.6 or lower. So if you put a 1.4x teleconverter with on a lens that's f5.6, most cameras won't autofocus because the effective aperture is now f8. Therefore, uh, the, the trade-off, especially with wildlife photography, is that you lose autofocus and you're going to be missing a lot of shots because of that. Now, some bodies will autofocus with f8 lenses. That means with this Canon 7D Mark II, I can put a 1.4x teleconverter on here and autofocus with this f5.6 lens. Same applies for the Canon 5D Mark III the Nikon D810, and a handful of other higher-end bodies. But even with that, the autofocusing is always a little bit worse. It's always a little bit slower because the camera's just getting less light. And on these Canon bodies, you can only autofocus with the center autofocus point. So for a lot of us, losing that autofocus capability isn't going to be worth it. There's another big drawback, and that's less detail, less sharpness. Unless you're using just a world-class lens with an f-stop of f4 or f2.8, it's almost never going to give you more detail to put a teleconverter on. Instead, you'll just kind of be blowing up the blurry lines that are coming from the lens. Only if your lens is higher quality than the detail that your sensor can extract will you actually see any improvement. Now, you'll almost never see an improvement if you're already using an APS-C body because they have a lot of pixels crammed into a small space already. So we spread that light out, we just end up capturing more blurriness. We've done a lot of testing around this. And in fact, using in our most recent round of testing of the big super zooms, we didn't find a single one that extracted appreciably more detail when using a teleconverter. So with an APS-C body, I say, just basically never use a teleconverter. With full frame bodies like the Canon, D, the Canon 5D Mark III or the Nikon D810, you might be able to extract some more detail. Essentially, you're giving yourself the uh, 1.4x crop 
that you might be getting if you were using an APS-C body instead. In fact, the results are very, very similar. A lot of people ask me if they should get the name brand Canon or Nikon teleconverter or go for one of the off-brand like Tamron teleconverters. And my experience has been that there's no noticeable difference in detail between the name brand and off-brand teleconverters, especially not when you factor in other things like atmospheric conditions. Another common question is, what's the difference between a teleconverter and an extension tube? Well, teleconverters have glass and they tend to be more extent expensive. Extension tubes do not have glass. They both fit between the lens and the camera though. Teleconverter brings far away subjects closer to you. An extension tube allows you to focus on subjects that are already so close. In fact, so close that you wouldn't normally be able to focus on them. Hope you found this video useful. Of course, the most important thing in wildlife photography is getting close to your subject. So if you wanna learn more about wildlife photography techniques or any part of techniques around any part of photography, check out my book, Stunning Digital Photography. Once you get into organizing all your photos, I know you come back with hundreds and hundreds of wildlife photos. My Lightroom book will help you out a lot. And if you just wanna know more about camera gear, things like the differences between extension tubes and teleconverters and which teleconverters you can buy, check out my photography buying guide. Of course, you should subscribe to this channel. That's completely free to see all of our new videos. And do me a favor, click like and share this video with your friends. Thanks.